Good evening, everyone. It's time to call to order our regularly scheduled April 11th monthly board meeting. Good evening. It's great to see everyone um, on this rainy afternoon. Um, seems like our last meeting had a little rain as well. So that's always what happens when the seasons begin to change. So happy about that. Um, Hoping that folks had a chance to review the agenda um, that Crystal distributed earlier in the week. I entertain a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. And there support. I've been moved and seconded that we would approve the agenda as printed. Any discussion? <laughs> yes. I'd like to add uh, two things. I'd like to add um, to the subcommittee updates master plan. I'd like to add Michigan class to unfinished business. Have a discussion. Publication. All right. Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the agenda with the modifications indicated, say aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. That will move us on to the minutes. Um, and we have copies of the March minutes uh, for review. These were also distributed earlier in the week. I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the March meeting. I wrote down the song. <laughs> I'll second. Yeah. And seconded. All right. Discussion. Yes. Um, and I'd like to add master plan to subcommittee updates because I spoke. Yeah. 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 It is yes. an addition. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Do you want to add to it? Sure. Right here. Okay. We're on minutes of the meeting. Right here. Master right. Plan. But I yeah. had, but that was in. It was last time. Yeah. But yeah. that was. We're approving that. Okay. Page. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, any other corrections? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor, let us know by saying aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion. Absolutely, one that mentions. But what I had meant to say, I'm sorry, was that I had asked for it to be added to the agenda. Last and during the March meeting. During the March meeting. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, Kathy. Okay. Yes. All right. Jim, can you catch it? Uh, that's clear. No, I, I, I didn't catch that. Thank you, Kathy. All right. That will take us uh, to the treasurer's report. So, Kathy, I will give you the floor. Okay. Um, I move the board approved the March 2024 operating bill totaling. $405,598.64. Okay, we'll second. 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 $598.64. Any discussion? Uh, say, um, Kathy, myself, Kelly are all in an approval chain for these uh, expenditures every month. Um, and we do um, get a lot of proactive messaging from the team here mm -hmm. lately, um, from Ashley, about expenditures and things that we call our attention. So I appreciate that. The note for uh, just a quick question. The Kickstart Farmington um, amount is that typical monthly? That's um, actually going to be built to the friends for the sponsorship of a kids or greater film festival. Yeah. Okay. 
questions. If no further questions, um, all of those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Any okay. opposed? Um, I move to receive and file the financial reports. Okay. If we need to properly second that we receive and file the financial reports, any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, any other items uh, for the treasurer's report at this time? All right, thank you very much. All right, with that, uh, we will turn it over to uh, Stacy for our friends of the library report. Good evening. Thanks, Good evening. So I just wanted to report out on our very successful fundraising weekend um, this last Friday through Sunday. Uh, we grossed almost 7,000 total with um, wow. about 1,000 coming from the odds and ends art auction, which was Jillian's brainchild. It brought in, um, well, it got rid of a lot of the art, all the art really, some of it's in my house, but that's okay. <laughs> and um, it brought in a, a, a really uh, great, target audience. Uh, it was a 21 and over event and Jillian did an excellent job in getting that special liquor license. So everybody was really happy. And I do have a new favorite wine. It's Trader Joe's Brut Rosé and it will be making an appearance at the gala. <laughs> <laughs> Along with what was the red one graded or red? Or well red. One? Well red. They're out of stock on that so I'm going to have to. Sure. So did you sell the um, Rockwell? Oh, we sold all of them. Yeah. You? Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. that went to the phone. I mean, and I love them. Ones. I just didn't yeah. have any room for them. <laughs> and we sold the giant uh, boat model Good. to a gentleman who was so excited to have it. Yes. Yeah. On average, about how much did you get per piece? Just curious. Uh, we made most of them want more than well, that, except for those trees. But I 34 would. goes into 623 how many times? And that's how much we made. <laughs> Um, the highest uh, bidded piece was $100. Is that the, the, one frame. the incredibly intricate frame? Yeah. yeah. Nice. The lowest piece was a dollar. Okay. I was really asking that question to see if this uh, event is in my price range. <laughs> Before the shop will be next no. one. I'm like, I want to say Before the shop. <laughs> and it was so successful that people left asking when the next one was going to be. <laughs> And we did have um, one of, I've had a number of uh, teen volunteers and their parent came, Katie, Katie Persak, and she works at CCS. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so she was very interested. Maybe she'll be a board member for <laughs> the friends the next time we meet. Fingers crossed. So it, it went really well. And I think like beyond our wildest expectations, well, we had about 40 paying customers, I think. And they were really, really happy. Everybody, most everybody had a good time. A couple of people didn't, but they came alone. It was a friend's event. I really wanted to come up. My son had dental surgery that day with oh. anesthesia. So it's the old little. Well, maybe he could have used a little bit more anesthesia. <laughs> Oh no, he was generous. Well. <laughs> so, so thank you to Jillian for doing that. And I'm forward to our collab this summer. We do that for our sale. That's the next thing. Yeah. And then the book sale was uh, wildly successful. There's like nothing left. And we made almost $6,000. We made almost $3,000 the first day, which was like almost as much as we made for the entirety of the October sale. So I think having it be, um, and thank you to Peter for moving stuff and, and bringing stuff down. Having it in the north part of the fiction browsing room was uh, attracted a lot of traffic because sure. nobody had to go upstairs or take the elevator. So, yeah. did you watch the North Stop? Was the same weekend? So, that is an interesting subset to this because we did it right before book set, uh, book stock, and they had their opening on Sunday morning. And I think it actually, it's like 
uh, a rising tide lifts all boats kind of thing because people are like, oh yeah, and then I'm going to Bookstock on Sunday. And people then came back to the back sale and said, oh, I went to Bookstock on Sunday and I saw Robert Heinlein first edition for $200 and but I put it back. And I'm like, so what am I doing? We need to, we had competitive pricing. Um, Li Jun, uh, who's uh, the head of acquisitions, I think is her title, right? She had some volunteers who were looking for some work to do. And so I had them price some of our donations. And oh my gosh, you guys, there's a first edition Arabian Nights that from 1938, that the lowest price through Bookfinder, which does a compilation of different sites, is $284. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, and you would have sold that before for how much? <laughs> I I I took the advice of Kim Hoke, who's the treasurer at the uh, Bloomfield Township Library Friends, and I did everything at about a quarter of its cost so that it could remain competitive. Because I mean, if I get a little piece and somebody else gets a bigger piece, that's fine. Everybody gets a piece, right? Yeah. So it, it it seems to attract much more interest in people who are really serious either about collecting or reselling. So I think that's a, I think that's a market that we'll go for. And I think we'll have enough of that kind of thing. And the donations just keep coming that we might have a July sale. And to be honest, the volunteers are super interested in, in doing that. There are, I mean, there's, there's like a, a, a core of people who attend and they're like, okay, Stacy, I'm going to go and do this. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, have at it, <laughs> you know, because here's your time to shine. And they, they upsell and they just do an amazing job. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And I think um, if we can replicate that su success, it'll be good for us down the line. So that was, that was great. And thank you to everybody, Jim, who came and, and did a lot of work and thanks for bringing the signs back and uh, do I get stolen? <laughs> no, no, but two okay. of the, the two signs that, at Farmington, I assume staff picked them up. Oh, I hope so. I yeah, because I'm only giving you six signs back. Did they? Those two were gone. Oh. I, I've lost signs. You're down. I'm down about eight signs. <laughs> Did you get the one at the corner yet? Yeah, there's still one. Oh. corner guys. I wasn't going out yeah, and standing yeah. around on right. purpose in this right. weather today. <laughs> Um, and then the gala is June 7th, and uh, we're working on invitations and everything, and we're going to get a sign for the branch this year so that you can have so that you can, so that they don't feel well, because they don't come to, to the tour. So that's it. Any questions? Any questions for Stacey? I don't have any. Thank you very much. Appreciate all the hard work. I hate I was out of town. I wanted to see both of these events, the book sale and the, uh, the auction. Uh, but since we'll have another one uh, and another one, uh, I have another opportunity. So thank you. That will bring us to the director's report. Kelly, I will turn it to you. Does anybody have any questions what I wrote? Because I'm going to go off topic. I got other things. Um, I do want to say that the Book and Author Fest, though, the registration has ended. So, <laughs> um, and there is a wait list. Wow. Of course. Yeah, okay. We were talking about uh, events kind of uh, generating the energy off of one another. I think this is one of those events. I know at the outset, there were some people who said, oh, is there a room to have a book festival in the midst of? A festival, right? right a larger right, festival. Right. And what we found, I think, because I heard so many comments about how much people love this and from authors who wanted to be in it but couldn't get in it. Well, so now there's a waste list again. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's only so much space, right? Mm -hmm. um, same location? Same, yes, same location. Uh, they wanted to bring it more into art on the brand, like more inside. The walls of art on the ground, you know, where it's not locked off, but um, they didn't get city approved. So, but um, the city of Rachel Timlin, who's the person from the city of Farmington Hills, she would say to make sure it was on the map so that people could find it that way. So, we'll see if that happens. Yes, it's so, it's usually on the that little Masonic. park by the Masonic Temple. Yeah. So, any. I don't I think I don't know how many authors they got. I didn't hear that, but Sarah just sent out the email that it's closed. So if you get any questions. 
and you know, it's close until because you have to pay a fee to be there. So they have so much time to pay a fee. And then if they don't, then they'll go down the wait list to let more people in kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, just FYI. Yeah. Um, so some exciting news, and I just want to share this with you. So Sona, our graphic designer, had her first picture book published as the illustrator. Yes. So she's official. I mean, it's a beautiful book. We have it on order. It's just not here yet. And when we were talking to her about it, we um, she was telling us that she used a lot of things from her home in the book because that was her inspiration, like, you know, dishes or because she would look around her house and and she would just design that. So a lot of what of her she has in her house is the book. And not that anybody would know, but it's very cute. Yeah. yeah. So we're lucky to have her. Um, first of all, I should have said this at the very, very beginning. Staff is very appreciative of the food that was delivered today yes. from both the friends and the board. And uh, did we deliver on the same day? Yeah, you know, maybe next year we can coordinate. But you know, it was great because there was so many options for you know everybody. They had fruits and vegetables. Okay. You had salad okay. and lasagna. So you know they were very appreciative. There's leftovers for tomorrow. So um, lots of comments about that. Um, once again, this year I'm reading of the names at the Holocaust Museum. That's their annual thing. It's on May 6th. There's still slots open. If anybody wants to sign up, I can send you the link to do that. Oh, both okay. ways. Um, you don't have to worry about a good financiator. And no one listens to you anyway. So you're just going, <laughs> oh, thank goodness, right? But um, it's very rewarding to do that. So it's a 30 minute time slot. And you uh, usually it's 15 minutes, you're with somebody. So you're not reading the whole time for 30 minutes. It ends up to be about 15 minutes every. You just switch pages, so it's fun. Um, and then speaking of, so Sue Ross is the person who sends this, and she's on multicultural, multiracial community council. Yeah. And was she? she burned, oh, three houses. Oh, so she. Um, well, anyway, it transitions into so MCMR is going through a little bit of a transition. So um, this. City of Farmington Hills is deciding whether they want to bring it under the umbrella of their boards and commissions where there's actually a. Oh, so it's not currently? No. I guess not I always like had a, the impression that it was. Well, kind of, but no. Hmm. It's not. It's really weird. I'm not sure how to describe it. So basically, it was. A resolution was made by the city of Farmington, the city of Farmington Hills and Farmington Public Schools. And that was how this formed. And, and that's how it's always been. So now the city of Farmington Hills has decided uh, whether they want to bring it under so that maybe more control. I don't know. What exactly kind of group is this that we're talking about? Multicultural, multiracial community council. So the schools want to participate in that. Farm to city wants to participate in that. Well, they already do. They're the ones who made the resolution to have it. They just want to bring it more as what their other boards and commissions. Um, so last April, they took away the funding for that particular commission. So they haven't been funded. So. Let's see. I don't know what's going on. I'm not privy to that. I just yeah. know that they're going under. It's the. It's a little. It's a little. It's a complex situation. Yes, very, <clears throat> um, very complex. So. Yeah, and all of the committees, uh, commissions, I think, see the budget cut as we saw yeah. our treasurer there uh, requesting oh, funds. Yeah. At City Hall for the beautification committee. Right. Um, so that's interesting enough. Yes. So anyway, that's where we're at. That. Um, Last week, I met with uh, Joe LaRusso. Um, he is so currently mayor of Farmington, but he is a consultant who's working for Oakland County to do a digital equity project. Huh? You can come in. <laughs> um, a digital equity project. 
And so he wanted to meet. And so he is looking at uh, who in Oakland County, where in Oakland County you don't have, people don't have access to internet or whatever. And so it's very interesting, very detailed report, but his, um, the goal is for Oakland County to be 90% accessibility, I guess, you know what I'm saying? That's their goal. And so most areas are, except for this one little pocket up in the Oxford area. Um, but along with it, with that, when you get access, then how do you get people, the devices who may not have the money to get their devices? So that's where he's looking at libraries to be um, that place where they can come and get access because they have a fund, funding source that will provide the devices and then we just give them out and all that kind of stuff. So he was looking for input on that. It was very interesting. So Farmington, there's like, there's not very many libraries in Oakland County where they decided that I mean, he went by poverty level. It's a very convoluted uh, thing, but he went by poverty level. Farmington Hills is one of them that would benefit from having devices available based on number of people in poverty level that may or not, may not be able to afford devices. Southfield was one, Rochester Hills was one, Bloomfield Township was one, believe it or not, right? Um, and I can't remember, Pontiac, you know, Pontiac. Um, but anyway, it was very interesting. So he was just looking for input on okay if we went to libraries how would how what do you see as issues and so i gave him some ideas and so and put him in touch with the library network to get other oakland county libraries so we didn't have to piecemeal every oakland county library so anyway it was an interesting conversation so when you're talking about devices there are you talking about hot spots or are you talking about devices like a computer i think okay yeah. not chromebook because they're too <laughs> Well, I didn't say that. But... Oh, I know. I've watched our students <laughs> right. a long time. Well, right. And yeah. it, yeah. Processing power a lot. Sometimes, I mean, for what a full laptop costs now, but you're saving on the Chromebook, you might as well buy the laptop. Yeah. Really yeah. future proof it and make, it, make sure yeah. you're going to But I mean, that's what you're talking about, an end device. Yes. Okay. And, okay. and would have the software loaded on it, that, okay. the typical software on it that okay. people would, would need. So it's, it's a great concept. We'll see how it goes. Any other questions for me? That is very interesting. Um, I know we're having a conversation that topic around people who did not have devices at the end of the last board meeting. Um, I was asking that very question, so didn't know he was working. Yeah, you should see that that his spreadsheets. But yeah, that's a lot of research. Okay. Any questions for Kelly? Thank you very much. Uh, I see that we have two additional items. So Peter, you're with us to talk to us about the lovely roofing of our buildings, which is very apropos for today's weather. Yes. Um, so the, the roofing is, both buildings are coming up on um, what a lot of roofing contractors say, like the life expectancy. They usually say a roof should will last around 20 years. Um, we're a year overdue on this building and uh, the branch is two years. Uh, but we recently had our um, semi-annual roofing inspection done in January and they have given sections of our roof uh, letter grades. So right now, for uh, this building, we have eight sections in total, and they have given six of them a D rating, which means we could have two to four years of um, you know solid roof left before we have to have to replace it. Uh, for the branch, we have all six of them are. Six out of six is a letter D, so two to four years there. Um, they have provided options for replacing those uh, sections, and they have priced it out. And 
I'm, you know, as we as we kind of go along, we've gone through the the winter and now this rain here today. Um, and I'm kind of recommending that we should start slowly chipping away at like this, uh, you know, getting these sections replaced. Because uh, right now here, those other two, we have a letter B, which I believe is uh, eight to 10 years. So we're not having to replace the entire roof of the building, but we do have to replace some of the A price it out for this building is 244000 for all six of the sections that need to be fully replaced. And if the branch is 100000 so in total it would be give or take 344000 uh, But if we, you know, since they're saying we still have two to four years left, we could definitely break that up. And in those four years, have everything completed slowly out. So it'd be really give or take 86,000, you know, a year replacing sections of our. It would cost more if we stretch the count because prices rise. Or is this a locked in figure? Um, it wouldn't be a locked in figure, but I don't see it changing uh, dramatically just because most of that is uh, material that's, you know, very common to get. It's readily available. Uh, what does change is mostly time and labor. Um, they have to keep up with the times to, you know, pay their employees, do all the gas mileage, all that stuff. So they are able to do one section at a time? Yes. Uh, in the both roofing reports, they broke it down. Um, in each section, they said, hey, this is what is we're seeing it wrong. For this section only, this is this price. And then at the very end, they totaled all that up saying, if you were to do everything all at once, it'd be this or one section. Of so what sections do they say to start with? They didn't say uh, specifically which section to start with. Um, that one would just be up to us. They just kind of gave it an overall grade uh, saying, you know, these sections, it, as their entirety are the worst sections. But any of the D sections, I guess, is where yeah. part. Okay. Yes. And there's a lot of flat roof here. So have they addressed the flatness and how it, the whatever it is that's going to keep it from clocking from coming apart like it has in the past? Yeah, so that would be uh, part of the replacement. Um, like over over in this part of the building, it is all flat, so we could walk on it to get to the rooftop units. So they would replace um, like the layers of it, so it would make it uh, more sturdy to walk on. They would replace the caulking throughout uh, everything, so it doesn't when it rains, it won't leak into the building. If we were to do the whole thing, what would be the timeline along with that? Um. I think uh, I would have to reach out to them and talk to them further on that, but I don't. Uh, I don't think it'd be years. I think they could do it in a year or in a season, because we don't have, um, like, looking at our pictures. This building would obviously be the the more extensive one since we have more angles and more square footage, but a lot of it is just. Uh, roofing panels. We only have four, technically four sections that are flat roof that's uh, walkable. Everything else is just the slanted, um, the metal sheeting. Is it, is it tarred? Yes. Tarred. We'll have a smell going on before we're doing that. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of the materials, um, Peter, what are your insights on um, materials, are there any different materials available today that might offer um, any uh, energy efficiency advantages compared to what we have with some of your folks? Um, that I would have to talk with them more. Um, I'm not, I'm not a, a huge expert on roofing materials. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can, uh, I can definitely talk with them more to see, um, you know, a better way to 
uh, line the roof so that way we can get either like cooler temperatures on the building or uh, just re 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 retain the heat that's already inside. Yeah, I think it'd be worthwhile to ask the question because as we look into the future and we think about our operating expenses, utility costs is one that we don't have much control mm -hmm. over other than trying to mitigate uh, against it in advance. So I'd be interested to know if there's something, some technology that might cost a little bit more, but could pay out in the long run. I'd just be interested to know. Have we gotten any other bids or um, is this in this is the only one. We are currently contracted with Royal Roofing. They do our semi-annual and most of our, uh, actually all of our roofing repairs as we call it in. Um, so I'm still kind of new to the, the process. I, I thought it was my understanding that if we're contracted with them, we did, wouldn't have to bid out. But You can bid out uh, if it makes sense to bid out. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You should probably bid out just to see what you can get. Okay. Um, but then you'd have to really trust the company that you're bidding out. This this company is very familiar with our roofing issues, so that's the benefit. Yeah, and I think really it's about um, expenditures over X threshold, right? We generally would put it out for bid. Yes. Um, I do agree, though, that you know, there's a relationship and understanding of the type of service and the the, the trust factor with the contractor is very important, but I probably would suggest that. Just to see what, what whatever somebody else would come in. I can even give you just a little bit of a negotiation tool. Mm -hmm. well, I was just thinking, you know, whether to do it partial or full, would a difference be that if you decide to do the big improvements on it and the millage, it's going to be a millage election in November, do you think that the public would see, well, they seem to have enough money to fix the roof. You know, is, is that an element of whether you space it out in terms of repair or get it all done at one time? Mm. I think that's a good question. Um, I think there will be people who might ask questions about our fund balance in general. Um, interesting conversations at the school board right now. They are also going through budget conversations and a person you know, at the podium was asking about the fund balance. Um, and so I would expect us to get those questions. Part of the reason we maintain that, though, is to be able to um, execute on the building projects, right, uh, when we need to. Um, so I don't know. I think it might cause some questions, but I think it would be the same question. It's about the fund balance. Well, we have the funds to do this because of our um, prudent financial management so that we don't have to continually come back to you for uh, additional funds for building projects, right? Um, it's kind of the narrative that I would have on. But yeah, I do think it could cause some questions. But if we start this work e this year, either way, construction would start, right? So people would see things going on. So I think that the observation would be the same. Whether we decide to do it all this year, within a year, or if we space it out over four years, um, I think that I don't think it'll matter. Um, so with that being said, um, I think you know, I know. just want to say the reason that Peter's here and for this discussion is because we are doing budget. So kind of want to know what money we you either want to move from your capital fund or if you want us just to put it in building and improvement funds and have that. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you can also decide to do it after the budget too, because you can move money and well, I'm just saying we just you kind of need to. Yeah, I think, I mean, my thought on it would be to plan to complete the entirety of the project based on the expenditure um, that Peter's forecasting. I'd rather him have the flexibility to advance with the project as needed versus having to come back to us, um, especially with some sections of the roof in deep spray. Um, so I think that would be my thought on it. I do think we probably need to send it out to bid, though, um, and then. Have you come back? And I think that was your plan anyway to bring it back to us in May uh, for approval. Well, we probably won't have bids back by May. Right. Well, so, but again, you can yeah. we can move money anytime. Right. So it's yeah. not it's not depending on this budget, but like, we just wanted to if it was something that we didn't have. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think okay. if you use the estimates that we have, 
put yeah. budgeting purposes. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay, okay. too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think you have to put it out. But yeah. It's a lot of money. Well, you have to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to. And we should be aiming to finish everything in two years, not not four years. Because if even if they get even if they're right about a grade of a you know roof lasting two to four years, it'll definitely only mm. last two years. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a chance of once you finish all these you know D levels, ones that we have that are B, they yeah. end up being B. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's our plan for that. Uh, we did have roofing on there, but do you want to talk about LED lighting? Um. Are you prepared or not? <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I did. Um. When I first uh started in November, uh, November to uh, December timeframe, I did um have contact with an old building services company that I used at my other job. And I had them come out just to kind of give me an estimate on um, what it would be like to replace all the interior lighting with LED. Because um, as you walk through, we can see we have a lot of ballast problems. Um, we've tried replacing the balls, but it turns into something else when it's the ballast. You have to remove that and whole thing. Um, let's see if I can pull up what So with that, I did have them uh, price it out because uh, I know this is also something we want to do with uh, our, you know, our future master plan stuff that uh, improving the building. Plus, when you uh, change the LED, it's more uh, energy efficient. We're going to be start. We're going to start saving money on uh, utility bills because they use less power throughout. Um, so I can add this up as I go along. So for the upper level at, I believe this one is the branch, it'd be 23,562 dollars to change. Uh, these are all just uh, like staff areas and the main walkway area, so where patrons will be, um, not necessarily like small offices or uh, conference rooms. Those could be easily changed out by myself. You said here or at the branch? Uh, this one's at the branch. There's a walk, walkway areas. This includes like shelving areas. I mean, all of the general public areas. So this is this is includes um, like the overhead lighting for just general. Uh, purpose, not necessarily if like a, a shelf had lighting and salt into it. Oh, but, uh, but the shelving areas of the general pool. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And what was that price again? I did have all these notes I've done. Let me just add all this up for you, and I can just give you a total price. Yeah, and if you want to, um, Peter, I mean, we can cover this one um, at another uh, meeting as well. Because I'm really interested for the trustees to understand um, the energy savings mm -hmm. component of that, um, to really understand what the impact would be to us budget-wise yeah. on the expenditure. So, yeah, so yeah, I can I can come back with uh, more numbers for the next one, uh, but pretty much the overall benefit for change, having someone else come in and change our lighting to LED. Uh, it would definitely make it easier because um, as I'm just really 
one person because uh, my team is not really savvy in electrical work. Um, it would be all me doing it. And you would have to kind of bring in not the equipment we have. So these other companies will bring it in like a, a boom lift or articulating arm and they're quicker at this. And then it will end up saving us in utility costs um, and it would have fewer, uh, I would say downtime. So like we wouldn't have lights be going out. Um, every area would be properly lit. I have two questions. The first is the lights that you're going to use are those the ones where it's going to blind me because so nobody knows that's really bad. <laughs> no, so the lights would be essentially exactly the same as the ones we have now. So they're kind of a stop. Yep. So um, the only difference in them is they just use less power to operate, uh, but they'll have the same uh, light mm -hmm. color. So like we were to place those ones, it would be that warm yeah. uh, white light on it. Good. And it, and it wouldn't, also, it wouldn't, like, increase temperature, because I don't know if you ever, like, notice your lamp will get hot and they could end up making your room hot. Um, so with LEDs, it actually could make the, the rooms more bearable. Like it would cool down, um, and it wouldn't use as much heat. And the other um, question, well, it's just a comment, really, because if we go with the master plan, there's going to be a lot of changes, and they're going to have different areas that are going to be for different things. So um, they're going to add things and take away things and whatnot. Have you talked to the architects about their ideas of what might occur? Because you might be replacing lights that you might not need in that area. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't talked to them. Um, from looking at the, the plans during our last two review meetings, uh, it doesn't look like they're taking the, the areas that I want to have LEDs replaced into, they're not taking um, out of, essentially. Because, <laughs> uh, like, if you think about it, it would be this main floor um, in front of the patron service desk, the info desk, all that lighting is going to stay the same. They're not adding walls really in that sections or tearing down moving desks yeah so this is just like uh like a normal light fixture like up here huh. um anything smaller so if it was we had like lighting like that where it's on a track or a stand lamp that's by a, a desk those wouldn't be those aren't included in this proposal because those do have the potential of changing our new yeah. plans yes question um, $23,000, how long will it take for the energy savings to recoup that cost? Uh, that one I would have to look up. Um, I don't see it being too long, uh, but I don't have exact numbers. Great. I have a second question, completely different. We're talking about roofing and we're talking about lighting, which raises the question of, have we thought about solar panels? Uh, I mean, that is an option. I haven't thought about it uh, specifically myself. Um, that is something we can definitely look at. Because we do, we, I mean, this area alone, we do receive a lot of sun. I'm not sure, so sure about the branch, if that would help. Um, it is a smaller building. A lot of trees. Yeah. yeah. Definitely this one. I can definitely look into solar panels and how that would affect us and help us. That, that relate, that's related to Ernie's question too about roofing material. You know, anything we could do uh, that makes it look like we're forward thinking, you know, C City of Farmington Hills got a lot of credit for the way they built their new city hall. And that would be an interesting thing, you know, beyond just the, um, beyond any savings we might enjoy uh, from, you know, changing the energy source. Um, just the idea, you know, the idea that, One step that the yeah, yeah. The idea that it's, I think we would get, you know, it would bring in good, uh, it, would, it would gain us good attention from the community. For, for So we should look into that as much as we can. Those kinds of things, solar panels, the green roofing materials. 
But in any case, I would be particularly interested in, in time that it takes to recoup the cost of the LED conversion in, in energy savings. Yeah, and as I look at, you know, if you're talking about any new technology, solar, I definitely think you should get into that. But um, it's a good mitigating factor to the uncertainty of rising utility costs, which budget wise, you know, as we're going to see the same millage that we get today, we're not asking for any more, any less. Um, but we do need to be looking at ways we can contain costs on our side. So, very good comments for sure. All right. Anything else for Peter? Okay. Thank you, Peter. Much appreciated. Um, and I think we'll look to see you probably uh, next month. Okay. All right, Sarah, you're up next for a conversation around. Crystal, can you share? Um, thank you. Digital signage. Okay, let's have slides. <laughs> yeah, I figured it would just be a little bit easier so we have some of the information. It definitely helps me. Mm -hmm. oh, that Peter, did you see figure for this location? Number Yes, um, I let me add. Oh, no, it's okay. I just, yeah, yeah. yeah I have, um, uh, I have base numbers for uh, both locations. The when they made the float, they didn't name them like branch location or whatever. They did uh north and south. So I had to figure out like, okay, well, which is north and south? And they broke up into two floats for each building, upper and lower. Maybe it still helps so she can change. I'm the host? Yeah, I think she might have transferred it to Oh, all right. Here, does their quote include all the new bulbs? Yes. They, uh, their quotes include um removing all the fixtures or not the fixtures the the ballast from it uh replacing it with the required amount of bulbs that go with that fixture and there's no different kind of wiring or anything yep all they do is um they remove the little it's like a little black box they remove that and then the wires that are already there uh that are hard, hardwired into the building, yeah. they go directly into the fixture. Okay. Um, if I'm correct, everyone had already looked at the quote for this project, right? I mean, Kelly had sent it out. Um, so this project was started by uh, Donald, and I just kind of adhered to it because I was also working with the vendor who had provided the quote for this sign. Um, just so you know, this is just kind of the visual of what the sign on a specific quote was looking at. I put a different image up there because I didn't like the image that they included on the quote <laughs> for the sign. Um, but the digital signage for this sign would be on both sides. Um, you can go to the next one, Crystal. Where does the sign go? Uh, so this monument sign would replace the front entrance sign at this location. So currently we just have a stone sign and it has our old logo on it with Farmington Community Library. And so Sarah, are we looking to like reuse the existing stone base or is this a totally new, new signage? Uh, so they would remove the stone uh, as a part of this. Okay. Crystal? I think this through, did we? Can yeah. you go to the next one? I'll signal her. <laughs> I thought it would be easier than me taking over his <laughs> hose. It's gonna signal you. She's <laughs> go to the next one. Oh, it's switching, but it's lagging. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. There we go. Oh, no. Seemed like a good idea. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, there we go. Okay. Um, so when we had first uh, started this project, this is just the main conversation that Kelly and Donald and I had about this project. So why do we want to get a new sign? 
uh, first of all, we want to make sure that our branding is updated because it is our old logo that is on the current sign out there, uh, and we want to have more visible recognition from the road. Um, additionally, marketing 212 mile road traffic, uh, this would be if we go with the digital signage option. Um, if we don't go with the digital signage, we wouldn't really be using it for the purpose of marketing. Uh, it would simply be a marking for people who are driving by to see that we are the library. Uh, and then also to maintain the current signage standards that other businesses have in the community. Um, our current sign just looks a little bit outdated and doesn't really match the better branding that a lot of other businesses, uh, organizations have in the surrounding area now. You go to the next one. I signaled her as just okay. fixing my <laughs> It's okay. It's coming, it's just slow. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll go ahead and just talk for just a talk to the last, you know? Okay, so project details, um, as you all saw on the quote, uh, the cost of the signage that was sent out to you all was $41,500. Um, Kelly has had conversations with Plant Moran. Uh, there was a reason why for this specific project, we didn't put it out for bid. We did select, or we did solicit multiple quotes from four different companies, um, but because of uh, Kelly can probably explain it a little bit better what exactly they said, um, but we were able to, we would be able to move forward choosing this specific vendor without it going out to bid. Um, for this specific project and this quote, uh, this would also include the removal of the old sign and then the installation of the new one. Uh, and then the digital signage includes a five-year warranty for those pieces. Uh, there's also an estimated $400 for city permitting. Uh, they don't know the final cost that that would be, but whatever the fee would be to make sure we have permitting for this signage. Uh, and then alongside of this, we would do, need to do a little bit of electrical work. This would not be with a signage company, but Peter had gotten a quote for uh, with the vendor that we work with for our electrical work for $3,500, which is what we would need to do in order to make sure we have enough electricity that would flow out to the digital signage. Um, and then just a couple of things that I wanted to note when it comes to how we're having a conversation and making a decision about, is this the best signage for the library? Um, for me personally, I think that we have few examples of well-utilized or well-designed digital signage in the city. Um, and uh, by that, I mean, I think that there are, we do have quite a few organizations that have digital signage in the area but quite a few of them are ones that I cannot read very well. Um, I don't necessarily think that the information that is shared is always worth the cost of what that signage would entail. Um, and so if we are gonna go forward with a digital sign, it was really important to me that we chose a design where it was gonna be large enough so that whatever we put on the screen is going to be very visible for whoever is driving by or for the majority of people who are gonna be driving by. Um, and it's one that is really just like simple and clean uh, and puts a good face forward for the library. Um, so I do think that this proposal out of all of the ones that we did receive, um, it definitely is the best digital design that we could go for if we want to go with a digital option, uh, especially based on our size limitation. We wouldn't go, be able to go any larger than this in terms of what the city is going to allow for us. Um, and then when I say well utilized, um, what I meant by that is that the library would be using this in, the, in terms of best practices for what accessible signage is. So making sure that we have high contrast in the colors that we're using, that any text that is placed on the signage is going to be in a large enough font to make sure that it is meeting mm -hmm. accessibility standards and that we're using minimal graphics. And um, so all of that together will make sure that we're able to utilize it in the best way possible. And it's not something that we spend a lot of money on. And then it's difficult for people to get the information that we really want to make sure that they would have um, on 12 mile road. Uh, a couple other things. Um, 
So uh, one of the other things I noted, which I think is some of the signs in the area. So signs that are well-designed, even if they are large enough, they might not be well-utilized. Um, so, and I bring that up because I think that there are a couple of examples that even I could mention in this conversation where I actually think it is a good sign design. It is large enough, um, but potentially the graphics are not being utilized in a way that is actually accessible for the majority of people who are on the road. Um, also, like all marketing platforms, um, so if we're talking about the digital aspect of the sign specifically, it might not be effective for 100% of the people that are going to be driving by this sign on the road. Um, it's the same in terms of social media versus print marketing. Um, social media is not reaching everyone, and it's not accessible for a lot of people as well because they don't use technology as much doesn't mean we're not going to do it. It just means I have to figure out how are we balancing out all of the ways that we're putting communication out there to make sure as many people are reached as possible. Um, so definitely um, one critique that you could bring up about digital signage is that not the entirety of the population is going to have an ease of being able to read it. Um, so I think the conversation should be, all right, are we making sure that this signage would be able to reach as many people as possible on the road based on the design of it and how we utilize it? And then do we think that that is worth what the cost of it would be um, in order to effectively communicate what we want to with this sign? Um, uh, and then lastly, uh, I was just going to bring up um, at least in terms of the conversations that Kelly and I have had, I think we're kind of in agreement that we definitely need a new sign. Uh, so I think the conversation is down to, do we want signage that serves as a location marker and also adds marketing value? Um, or do we want signage that just serves as uh, a location marker? All right. Well, um... I'll get to you as questions in a minute. I just want to say one thing um, that this one is near and dear to my heart because, like Sarah, I hate bad signage as well. Um, <laughs> and as this conversation came up previously, I guess that was my only general guidance was that um, we we are very thoughtful, as you all always are, about what we would consider um, and what we would would want the sign to to look like. Uh, I personally agree. And from a branding perspective, we've done quite the job of, I think, um, propagating the new branding out there. Um, and so I even notice it myself now when I ride by, I'm like, oh, that's the old logo. <laughs> um, or like also when you log into Hoopla, the old logo shows. Oh, okay. um, it says provided by Farmington Community Library. Mm -hmm. So I'm go like, putting a flag. Mm -hmm. So to, from that perspective, um, generally I support a signage that's aligned with our current branding. So I think this makes sense. Um, like you guys, I'm concerned about um, the readability, um, the size, all of that. Um, you mentioned, Sarah, about size limitations and that this design, the proposed design is within the current max allowed. So I'm assuming, unless a special permit was granted, that this would be on par with the signage at OCC then because that seems to be the largest one I see in town. So I don't know if you, how that compares. Yeah, so unfortunately, I don't, I don't know all of the limitations themselves. I just know what was communicated about this specific signage. Um, I do know that this company and Donald have mentioned that it does vary based on what road you're at. And then also what other signage and um, businesses are in the area and signage that they have as well. Um, I don't believe that we were able to get a sign as large as OCC. I think OCC is as larger than this. I feel like that's the only one I can read. But and I love OCC. I, I sent it as an example to Donald because I really liked theirs. <laughs> I would say the only, I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, player to burn in a town of 12, and I would say that would be the Excellent. Like certainly not the schools. No, no. Yeah, North is pretty. Cold. You know, Donald wanted to go to the schools, and I was like, no, Donald. No, nope. yeah, right. Uh, so this is actually the same exact design as the new signage that the city of Farmington Hills put up at City Hall and at Heritage Park and one other location I think they could mention as well. So if you all have driven down Orchard um, and passed by the signage for the City Hall, um, that is the exact same signage design that will be put up. 
So that'd be good. That Let's look at then. Um, okay, that's perfect. Are they, okay, what I love best about what you're saying is that it's the content too. Like like you want to sign that, or at least I sense you want, you're in favor of having a digital sign that makes sense. And that's, that's yeah, well, yeah, anyway. Uh, history of working at an organization where we're not even utilizing the signs, right? So, if, but I don't, okay, if we had that sign that the city has, I don't, yeah, I was going to say that. It's not my favorite. Like, like, how do you feel about that sign? Could you make it work? You know, I'll have to go and, like, watch through kind of the entire screen show of what graphics that they have up. Um, I mean, if, if um, the very first image that I had up there, where, I mean, it's quite literally just black and white. Even if we were to be able to put text up like this, my assumption is they probably have a lot more colors going on maybe like graphics behind what their text is, things like that. Sticking to really deeper colors and having high contrast is going to be the best. And so I can't say for sure whether or not they are following that. And the issue is truly just with the sign. Um, but sure. based on... An issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it definitely is, you need to have both of those things. Um, I mean, even like the players bar and sign, it really throws me off with well, all the I, colors. I and, just meant the size. Yeah, yeah, the yeah colors, no, the yeah, sign, yeah, yeah. The, the size of that sign is really great. Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely you. You have to be pretty simple in terms of the colors and the the graphics and boldness of the text. I have a very hard time reading the city hall sign, mm -hmm. and it's quite close to the road. This one is not going to be as close to the road, mm -hmm. and I think that size is too small. Personally, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm not sure if we need to have it double-sided because you have a lot of traffic going one way. And if I can't even read the sign that I'm riding next to, how am I going to be able to read it from the other side? If it's, you know, flat against the road like that, I think it would be more visible for folks. Okay, so it would be like, I think, uh, I think Fabian has a sign that's parallel to the road. Maybe if, if what you're suggesting, Kathy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that. Yeah, rather than perpendicular. I kind of like this sign personally. It doesn't have the most display area, mm -hmm. but as far as a design, it's kind of clean, low profile, which I think matches our building design. You know, I like the design elements of the sign. Yeah. Of no. their particular sign. Is that yes? Double sided. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I'm also curious about the brickwork. I think that the. It's, the reddish or the pinkish kind of throws me off a little bit. I'm wondering if it could be more in the grays because it, depending on what colors you're going to be using, it could really clash with the brick work. Mm -hmm. I would say I think um, I was probably expecting either, this is probably silly, but I thought maybe we might even be reusing the existing base or something that would kind of match that neutral color palette yeah. um, at least rather than... Um, Kind of a brickwork pattern to know if we have that on or not. But I think that that kind of lends itself to this conversation around site planning and some design and aesthetic standards, right? Um, which I think that came up when we were discussing um, memorial benches before. Um, and as we are going into the master planning activities too, I, I do think there's a need to have some standards around what we want the place to look like you know, um, aesthetically. Uh, and I think the city is trying to do some work in that regard now, even to the degree of, you know, how many lumens the, the light fixture is going to give off in a particular parking lot versus another, that type of thing. So, um, so yeah, I think I would want it to match the building um, exterior as much as possible. It's probably my guidance on that. It could be, if you're going to use that kind of ledge rock, you could have some of the grays and some of it, um, I think a little darker gray, lighter different grays and um, maybe like darker whites and, you know what I'm saying, but not color, I think that takes away. I would rather see a sign that blends with the building and is a fixed sign without trying to squeeze in the electronic words that people can't read. So you can only put a couple words that people driving by can see while they're driving. So I, I, you're going to pay extra money to get the electronic, to have more electric, electric costs to it, run the sign every year. And why just have a nice monument sign that blends with the building, has your logo on it, and try not to tell people what's going on. 
crammed into this sign that's not very big. Um, because if you use more than five or six words off to drive at the city, you can't read all that as you're driving and doing other things. You, it's better to have a very attractive sign that blends the building and it doesn't cost us more in, to run the digital signage. It's just a, an idea. But maybe it showcases the website. I do think, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I mean, I don't have, as Sarah pointed out, this is a an opportunity, right? It'd be real estate that we could utilize to market programming, to drive traffic to the library, to highlight, you know, things that we want to highlight. So I do think it offers that opportunity. Um, I think my guttural instinct from a design perspective is that I personally might prefer something along the lines of what Sharon um, indicated. And I'm not sure that we had, that we need a digital sign, but I really would look to you guys to advise us on that. Art. I think that we're stuck on such bad signage <laughs> that we don't know because there's a lot of bad signage in the area. So we don't know what good signage would look like. And I think that's part of the problem. Um, it is because I do feel like the OCC sign does both. I feel like it is a substantial monument sign and it gives that classic timeless look, but it is also very readable. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and so it 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 kind of does both things. And I and I guess I also What's think that well, and I also think that looking at a picture of it doesn't give you the visual of what it would look like out on the. Well, I'm definitely going to pay attention to city hall signage like closely now and look at that to to get a good feel. I would advise that we all do that. I mean, that's the point of reference for the proposal on the table, at least. I mean, look at what they're they're like putting on there, like how convoluted is their message. So if it's just something simple like AAPI celebration May 4th, 12 to 4, that's not a lot of information. But are they trying to cram in a graphic along with, you so know. We're going to kind of ignore whatever they have on there, <laughs> knowing that we'll be like, we'll be conscious about that. But we're just looking at the sizing side. Yeah. See, like, I works. think we just say come in. <laughs> is it possible to to research the OCC side? Well, yeah, but so we can't have that size side because it, it, remember it's the different size of the roads. Like, hmm. yeah, that, so we can't have that size that, side because oh, yeah. you're on 12 mile road, which is a busy road. And how big a sign should, can we have? The one that we have. <laughs> the one that you're. How big is that sign? I don't know. This is the size that City Hall has. Sarah, mm -hmm. currently. It, it would be so, uh, like what, roughly six foot, maybe a little bit more. Six foot? Uh, it's, but I think it's about six foot wide is, is what the signage that's proposed is. And what is it called? Uh, so it's able to that. And get a, as we're looking at signs, it's yeah. be six foot I think one. that's what's the other measurement. Uh, so it looks like it's six, a little over six foot tall, uh -huh. um, little over six foot like long, like the actual display okay. with is that two two feet wide, so like in between the two displays. Six by six by two. So when we're looking around, we can measure in our heads. Right. If I may comment. Um, so when I worked at Salem South Lion District Library, um, you know, in the country, middle of nowhere, right by, um, it's right at the corner of Eight Mile, and we were right by a stop sign, uh, stoplight, and um, traffic would back up there, you know, as people were waiting their turn, just kind of like how they do at 12 mile. So people would sit in traffic and look at our sign. Right. And anytime we had a program that wasn't doing well, sign up wise, or Libby stats were down, or Hoopla stats were down, once we put that on the sign, that shot up like, People read the sign. And I was totally skeptical about that when I started working there because I never worked at a library that had a sign out there. But after a few years, like I trust in the ability of the sign to bring the people in. <laughs> now, I totally think we need a digital sign because this was the old fashioned sign where you had to put like the individual letters up. <laughs> and then, like, three times a year, the high school teens would break into it and then write lewd things, <laughs> rearrange the letters. And then before we opened, I'd have to go and rearrange the back. <laughs> um, so 
not everybody is going to be able to read a digital sign, but even if 50% of the people who go past the sign can read that sign, you're still going to get people who come in. Mm -hmm. And the messages that we had on it were like free eBooks with the Hoopla app or like, you know, after hours movie, six o'clock register, whatever. I mean, you can have a really simple message. So I'm a firm believer in having a sign with a message. Um, and we have people now asking us where the library is because they don't even see the monument sign. I tell them it's by the post office. So I think if nothing else, we we can tell them we have a we have a digital sign now that'll at least be a better marker that that it comes in. Um, so that's just my two cents. I I believe in the power of the signs. <laughs> well, flashing lights get people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think you have Sarah, who's very clever, and no, not to cram too much information on. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so we're trusting in Sarah because yes. we understand. No, that Sarah leaves. No, right. Then we're in a separate. It's a problem. No, but I'm sure there will probably be some standards around what goes on the side. Right. And whenever she. Right. I'm sure she will leave as well. Now, one thing that I could try to work out is when Donald and I were trying to decide if this digital signage would be a good option, the company brought out a truck that was able to pull up the signage itself so that we could see the different resolution options. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I can reach out to the vendor and ask them if it would be possible for them to come to the next board meeting. I guess that would be at Farmington if we're switching every month. No, it's not every month. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, so I could see if they would be available during the board meeting next month so that I, we could actually, I, I would imagine they could put up some graphics that I put together and then we could just see that as an example in person rather than that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And in the meantime, look at science around. Yeah. 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 So I have a question. Uh, speaking of Farmington, um, last month when we were at Farmington, Maria Taylor and her friend were there. <clears throat> I I mentioned that um, that library doesn't really have signs. So you have State Street coming in and you have Liberty and it's coming off Farmington, which is a high traffic road and Grand River, which is a high traffic road, but there's no sign that says library here. And I suggest that we should do that. Um, so I know that Donald had had several conversations about that as well. Sorry, I don't mean to like keep it. Like Donald, you know, we've got Peter here, just as well, the one who is working on this project. Um, and I I want to say what we, the only thing we would really have been able to do since none of that property on, on the corner street is ours would be to have the signage kind of like what we have where it's just the stake in the ground with like the post office and library yeah. listed on that. Um, so, you know, I should say I would agree that that's an option, but that would also probably be a, a Peter and City Hall discussion, I would mm -hmm. imagine. On Grand River, that City Hall, those people are our friends. They'll be favorable. On the core at Farmington, that's Jill's, Jill's drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Genuine care friends. Genuine, yeah. 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 So, so I don't know if she'd be agreeable, but I suspect that the city hall would be agreeable to a sign. And if if we did, I would say not a green sign, like a highway sign. Something, something that, you know. On brand with the city sign. Well, you know, there is like on that city hall sign. It's like, it yeah. says live oh, police. Yeah. 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 It yeah. It does. No, I'm just saying. No, they can't. Just, no, they can't. talking about people can't see this. You can't see no, that. You can't. I mean, but I it does say that. I can't see it. <laughs> I think. Um, you know, it, 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 I, I know what your point is, uh, Bob. We don't really have the direction to sign it downtown. And maybe it's a conversation for like the DDA with the, the general signage, because there is a signage plan downtown for what that signage should look like. And maybe we should reach out to them to see if we could put something in place that would solution what they have. Yeah. I, I catch it. You know, what comes to mind, and, I, and not necessarily as an example, but just as, you know, like you see signs that have a finger, library, something to that effect that people will say, hey, I see it, you know, the stone sign that says police library, library fire, right? Police fire, city hall. I walk by there all the time. 
I don't even notice it. So. Well, we have some little signs out here, and, and I think there's sufficient. It's a blue sign. It's about that big, and it would be perfect pointing. There's, we'll keep there's it nothing. Yeah. We'll, oh, we'll, 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 we'll find out. We'll look for you guys and get some of I have confidence that Sarah will solve it all. Now, Sarah, I have one more question for you. Uh, I love the idea of having the sign vendor come out and show us kind of live and in person. I think that would be helpful for all of us. The other question I have for you is whether or not they uh, had samples for the different um, the rock, it looks like it's what they're using for the base material. Like, do they have examples of what's available or is this kind of it or how does that work? Uh, I, I would assume that since we're paying them money, they would they would bring out some other types of stone um, to give us those options. So I did not personally look at any options. Just kind of the design that was sent to us, and I just figured out what our branding would look like on top of it. But when I request that they come out and show the displays, I'll see if they can send along. Um, if not bring out samples, then at least send along some different options that they have for different color schemes. Because I do agree, I think if we could do even something like they sent along, but if it was in more grays or more colors that match the design of the building, that that would be a good route to go with. Can we get a design that's perpendicular to the road and get that to us? So um, in the concept of it, I'm not opposed to it. Um, so I can definitely ask them. I don't know if there is the only thing I could potentially think of is maybe because of the fact that the foundation is already built in there. I don't know if the bottom foundation, if anything has happened with that, um, it's definitely not my forte, but I will ask them if that's an option um, and seeing that that's something that we were wanting to look at. Yeah, so double-sided. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I will say, um, and I told Kelly this earlier today, like, this is not a hill that I'm going to personally die on. If, if we <laughs> think that a digital signage is not the route we want to go, if we think it's not worth the amount of money that we're going to put into it, um, you know, I don't think that the library is going to suddenly drop in its success rates because we don't have a digital signage. Um, but I think if that money is not competing with something else that we would spend it on, I do think that there are benefits to it, especially with the amount of traffic that goes on 12 mile road. So um, I agree with what Jill had stated that uh, it might not reach 100% of the people that are driving down the road, but if it reaches even 40% of those people, I still think that that's a significant benefit to having digital signage. I have thought on the flat versus perpendicular. I like the, the idea of perpendicular to the road for the reason that if you're driving and you've got two seconds to take your eye off the road, your line of sight will go here. If you have to look, that's a different thing. And, and that's a distraction. So, so if it's in a line of sight or just off, I can still keep my eye on the road, but I don't have to crane my neck and run into the bumper ahead of me. Just a thought. We definitely want to don't want to yeah, I'm sure get lawsuits it. for our sign being the cause of an accident. Yeah, leave my card out there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so I'll pass along all those comments and see if we can get some feedback. And, you know, as far as the um, viability of the sign, I think you and Jill have convinced me. I definitely trust you guys on that. Um, and I trust that you have compelling content that makes it make sense. So um, I think we just didn't want to make sure we have the right sign. So yeah, appreciate you guys. Look forward to that next meeting. Uh, just clarification. The reason why we don't have to go out to bid for this, even though it's over a 15,000 threshold, plus we did get three to four quotes already, mm -hmm. but it's because it's such a specialized thing that you don't have to go out and bid for that if you feel that there's some company that is better than the others. So that's what Plant Moran said. Also for the funding for this, this is leftover AMH money. We So it's kind of already built in there because we used, there was $109,000 left over. So we used part of that for the pickup locker. There's still 50,000 something for a sign that we could use without ripping into any savings or capital out there. 
the step oh, okay. one. Um, and the automated material handling project, another specialized vendor situation. Yeah. Um, so appreciate you. Well, we went out for a bit for me. We did. We did. Yeah. Well, still was only only like, one bit. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it could have been <laughs> a situation. <laughs> right. But, uh, but so, yeah. There. Yes. Uh, just to clarify, does that mean that this project would need to be contracted before the end of this fiscal year? No, we would just put move the money. We just keep the money in the account. Yeah. Any other questions for Sarah or Kelly? Jill. Thank you, Sarah and Peter. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Um, all right. That will take us to unfinished business. And in unfinished business, we have added an agenda item for Michigan class. So, Kathy, I'll turn the floor over to you. A lot of numbers I'm going to throw past. <laughs> I, when, uh, in Michigan class, I created four sub accounts uh, FCL Millage, FCL Endowment Fund, FCL Endowment Fund Dash Restricted, and LSCA, and that's Library Services and Construction Act. LSCA are federal monies that we receive for improving library services and undertaking construction projects. So on April 1st, as I told you the last meeting, I wire transferred $4 million from our Comerica Millage Money Market account into our Michigan class FCL Millage sub account. On April 1st, in our Fidelity account, I also placed a sell order on our FDRXX and our FGOVX funds worth $577,633.88. So due to market fluctuations, we lost $399.35 during those sell transactions. On April 3rd, I wired, I wired transferred $577 uh, and $577,234.53 into our Michigan class FCL endowment fund sub account. And then I transferred uh, 100,000 of that sub account into our FCL endowment dash restricted sub account. And then I closed our fidelity account. So that $100 has been restric restricted by the person who gave it to the library to be used only at the Farmington Library. And it's always been combined with the other endowment account and I wanted to get it separated so it's easier to keep track of it. So as of today, um, our FCL millage sub account has earned $5,900 and 11 cents. And if I combine the interest for all of those sub accounts, that's six thousand five hundred eighty-one dollars and eleven cents, and that's an eleven days. Class. So excited! And the interest is credited daily. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, because each sub account earns its own interest, because it's divided, Plant Moran wants to know if we want to keep the interest in the restricted endowment fund separate from the regular endowment fund or combine them. If we do keep it separate, this will keep the restricted funds interest restricted going forward. So it'll stay with that account. And that'll change the way the audit reports this information because they've always combined it. I don't think that's a big deal. Um, so our month to date interest on the FCL endowment fund is $577.80. And the FCL endowment fund dash restricted as of today is $103. So um, the question is, should we keep the interest from the endowment fund separate from the endowment fund restricted or should we combine it? And he had a little short meeting with the finance committee and we proposed to keep the interest separate. Obvious question from a, a lay person <laughs> is a, uh, we're, we're not obligated to keep it separate because I thought I would have thought we would have had to keep the interest separate. Well, and you know, Jim, I think from a giving standards perspective, I think that's why we all agreed it would be separate because if I gave right. $100,000 for this purpose, I would expect the earnings earned on that money to kind of stay with that as well. Is what I would expect if it's in an endowment for that purpose. Yeah. And because that the endowment fund and the restricted 
of fund have always been combined. There was no division in between. The money was always right. together. That's why the interest was always together. So I understand what you're doing. Yeah, you spelled this out very clearly, Kim. Thank you. So, um, do, do you have any, do you have anything to say? I mean, do you all think it should be separate? If the restricted accounts interest is separate, are you allowed to spend the interest non-restrictive? No, no, no. It would be restricted. So, so. Okay. I think having the most flexibility possible is a better option. Keep them separate. Keep them separate. Mm -hmm. I agree. Cool. Yeah, you know, you can't spend it. <laughs> <laughs> you can spend it on farming. I mean, we could right. do the roof. <laughs> the roof. We could do the roof with that. So, so I'm just on farming. I have another question. Are we all done with this one? Okay. The, uh, the name of the FCL millage account, that refers to... Uh, tax dollars going into that account that doesn't have anything to do with no that's for the city it's to put that mill in right the in other words that doesn't have anything to do with our camp mill no, camp no. Okay. okay that's what i want to make sure okay yeah it's just those monies that were sitting in the millage money market account okay. that we're not getting as much okay that's 600 right you said that it's earned so far in the oh, wait, which one in the endowment fund Combined, I guess I'm trying to understand oh. what the comparison is. If you know from the fidelity, like what we were, we would have had in fidelity if it had been. I can say we or not. Well, so um, this use this is five point five percent interest, and I believe the fidelity was four point eight. Okay, so it's That's it's quite a bit now. Let me ask a question about that, Kathy, though, because was it 4.8? Because I think I recall seeing you know, our Comerica statements like 2.7. Oh, the Comerica. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like oh, another. I thought yeah. you were talking about fidelity. No, yeah. like, okay. And, but most of the monies that were moved were from the Comerica method account, which was earning like 2.72. So this is almost double. Yeah. So pretty significant move, um, Kathy. I know you went through a lot of fire drills to get it done. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing. And um, that will take us to subcommittee updates. Do we have anything else from the finance committee? No, that's fine. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, that will take us to the personnel committee. So, um, uh, Mr. Hodge. Thank you. Thank you. You did not communicate. I did. You look under, you, no, look you under your pile of paper. Language. I did. You didn't. I did. Look under your pile of paper. Elected or refused, <laughs> as they said. You got it. There. Uh -huh. Okay, I just thought of all this myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. all right. um, okay, so there was a personnel committee meeting uh, regarding recommendation for staff merit increases. Personnel committee recommends a merit increase of up to 5% effective July 1, 2024. Um, so, the uh, proposed budget includes a merit increase of 5% for everyone. Not everyone will get the max. Proposed budget also includes raising the minimum wage to $13.03. It's been rules. It must happen. Those below $13.03 will get, will only get this increase if the court makes that ruling. Including the above in the proposed budget only raises the salary line by 1% and the total payroll expense by 3%. After completing the compensation study last year, staff wages were increased to just above minimum so that they were not making the same as new staff just coming on. The opportunity for a 5% increase allows seasoned employees to put more distance between their wages and that of newer co-workers. So we have a motion uh, to uh, increase the uh, 
Merit Ray's uh, personnel committee recommends um, a merit increase of up to 5% effect July 1, 2024, and I so move. It's been moved and properly seconded that we would authorize merit increases up to 5% uh, effective July 1, 2024, in accordance with uh, management annual review processes. Any discussion? Have you heard anything about the increase? No, we're still waiting for the L4029. Won't come till end of April. Any discussion? Any highlights from the committee um, from your discussion that you might want to share out? <laughs> or is it pretty straightforward? It was pretty much done this, discussion points. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I, mean, I, I feel like I, I've we've done this a few times now. Uh, I, I I did spend a lot of time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you live in that oil, right? I wanted it just, just right. All right. Well, seeing no discussion, um, I appreciate the personnel committee's work in considering these matters. I know that those uh, are never easy and that those are always interesting conversations. So thank you for your work on this. Um, I think we'll put it to a vote. Uh, all of those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, personnel committee. All right, that takes us to master plan. So, Kathy, I'll turn the floor over to you. Okay. Oh. Are we done? There is no other motion that we No, I was just you were to go 1%. Okay, gotcha. That's okay, it. I was, can you say what you said, though, about the minimum wage? Again, I, I lost that for <laughs> description. <laughs> I will say from a minute's perspective, the, the scripting helps. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 Sorry. Okay. I know this is really hard to see, but I've taped it up here so you can all see it later before you leave. These are the three drafts that um, the architect for the master plan have thought about for the branch. Um, and they were going to present it to the Farmington City Council, but because we haven't gone forward with our master plan per se. They want to wait on that. But I wanted you to see these so that you have something to think about. Okay, so this one is the existing parking lot, a private mixed use, a parking structure, and a combined city hall and library. Personally, I don't want this one This one here is the city hall. This is a parking structure, and this is the library. And the little things here show the different things that they're going to have uh, added to the, our library. Kathy, that's our existing building. Yes. Yeah. Well, with a different with, with, with additions. Yeah, our existing building here with the addition too. And then an existing parking lot or a parking parking structure. This is a parking structure, as is this. I like personally. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is um, private mixed use with below grade parking. This oh, is the right. existing city hall and an addition to the city hall, and then this is the library with our additions and a parking structure here. So this is just the three things they're proposing and um, they're gonna propose it to, you know, because the uh, Farmingtons, uh, they wanna um, extend or, or enlarge their area because it's so small. So mm -hmm. there are different ways. But I have to say, somebody got up there to look at if you want. Oh. So who owns the land that the parking structure on the right is supposed to be? I believe it's a city city. It's a city, city, lot. Lot. city yeah. lot. So who would pay for the structure? The city. city. Yeah. We're just going to walk for the ride. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. Putting a parking structure right here, like what, how do they, 
How does that help? How much bigger? I mean, well, they so they get a whole new building. But right, yeah. that's it's much taller. Be smaller, unless well, it's it is a smaller a footprint. footprint. Unless yeah. it's going to be, you know, a two story. Probably. But it could yeah. be ball days. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't elaborate on that. Okay. okay. In that model you mentioned, the low grade parking. In this you, one down, this one here. That's the yeah. third one. Okay. Um, very interesting. Thank you for keeping us um, up to date. Um, I know there might be some time sensitivity maybe from their side um, to look at this. I don't know if you know, Kelly, what time. No, I know they're chopping at the bit to show it to the city council, but I keep, you know, put it under wraps, put it under wraps. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think the pleasure of our group at last meeting was that we probably wouldn't want to bring this back um for discussion until post millage sometime in the fall maybe um was our thought i think um kelly has shared um maybe a preliminary draft with me um that i might circulate with you all to take a look at but i don't think we'll have them back to the meeting until post millage unless unless there's a strong desire for the one no no what i was gonna i had a question uh i i already know that this is not popular but um, no. but this idea of combining city hall and the library on the basic library footprint would that give us any opportunity to make the the downtown library bigger? Well, I don't know. Like it would, yeah, yeah, it's hard to it's say. Because, I, mean, I would think at that point they'd have to like tear down that building. building. Well, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at, and we'd be starting over. And and I know we would only gain space if we were going up higher. But that's what I'm saying. Is that an opportunity? where we actually get, I agree, I'm not in favor of combining with City Hall. I'm not sure that's but the best, but but would we would we get an opportunity out of that to make the downtown branch bigger? Well, and, you get an opportunity out of making it bigger by adding so there, additions. Okay, a couple additions, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. But we're still stuck with our existing. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of space. Very yes. Okay, what I'm getting out of that building is not new. You know what I mean? So, so we we'd still be. In a, I I would love having additions, but we'd still be stuck with a building where Peter is coming to that. And Jeff, <laughs> I think I think what you're raising is a very good question, and I think that's what this board that's our decision point. Right. We have to weigh the cost benefit analysis to understand if a new building is what we should be doing for the future, or if we should be making additions to the existing building, and I know in Farmington, there's a lot of sentiment around any change that's made. Right, right. As soon as the American Legion building or whatever mm -hmm. came up for sale and it was announced that that building was going to change, I saw the public comments about people felt very strongly that they didn't want anything else there, right. even though the Legion's like, we want to sell our property. Like, we're, 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 we need to do this. So I think we should take over Masonic Temple. <laughs> Turn that into City Hall. And rip off and this whole thing. Right? Like the the library. Library. Everything in here, and we build a magnificent library. That's what I think. Why don't you kind of get the Masonic Temple and then bump out on the park? Right. Well, the good mess with Blue Hat. <laughs> it's, 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 not not it's not going to last. It's not going to last. That piece is going to make it soon. Yeah, no. We are a coffee destination. I'm sure it's going to be around. <laughs> and there's competition. Okay, well, that's what I, I realize there's a major conversation about coming. You know, if you talk to the architect in that building, yeah. he will tell you that it's the structure of the Liberty Street location is good. Yeah. I okay. Mean, and it's more cost effective to remodel and and do that than to put in a whole new building. I'll put it like this. Well, well it's all we wouldn't be paying completely for, right? If it's a combined city hall right. library, that's what I right. was getting at. It's we all well, yeah. well yeah. how do you split those costs? Okay. And then, I don't know. How do you split electricity? And one of the things Water. that everybody in the library community seems to be clear on, Jim, as you alluded to, is that they don't want a combined facility mm -hmm. and they're okay with a combined plan, but yeah. they don't want to keep a separate facility. So, no, I, I agree that with everybody who said this is problematic. I was just wondering what opportunities that give us. Yeah. Now, I, I can see like you could have like that, like 
course, you know, the city's whole thing is about parking, right? To get more parking. Right. So they, <laughs> but you could have like this little walkway between the two buildings if you so chose. I mean, that's not a big deal, but, you know. Skywalk. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So something for us to think about over the summer. Um, I'll send the documents that um, yeah. were shared uh, so you can have some more reading on that and other questions might come up and direct those to Kathy because she's been on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. This will bring us to new business. And speaking of the city of Farmington, we got a note from uh, Mayor LaRusa about our minutes from uh, previous meetings, February minutes, and we need to make an amendment. Um, I believe, as it were, um, Trustee Doby was indicated as absent on the minutes mm -hmm. but she's just referenced as having made a motion later in the minute so i think it was just a snap food or copy mm -hmm. right. i think so yeah. well i wish i had the in front of me or do you have it with you? maybe this might because that's you know i've tried to note when when board members arrive um i just want to make sure that that's what i do anyway, i'll make the motion to amend the minutes but i just want to make sure that's what happened Uh, there's moving parts. We have the person that takes the minutes and we have staff that might transcribe them and some of the minutes. I was just glad to know people were reading our minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I'll look in like I don't want to I don't want to get oh have to wait while I'm oh there I see. Check into it. And, okay. And, yeah. And I'll, 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 so anyway, I'll move that we make the needed uh, changes to the February minutes. Okay. There's a second. I second. All right. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Any opposed? Great. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, and then next we have uh, an item relative to closing the Liberty Street location on Sunday, September 15th for the library extravaganza. And I think we did this two years ago when we held the first extravaganza. So any um, expounding on that, Kelly? Well, it's so Three. that all staff can participate here at 12 Mile. <laughs> and they're working. And yes. they're working. It's just that we need all staff on deck if it's gonna be like anything last time. <laughs> yeah, there are over 3,000 people. I'm hoping it'll be, be 5,000 people this time. Uh, so yeah, we just need to uh, have everybody on to participate. Um, so I would entertain a motion to close the Liberty Street branch on Sunday, September fifteenth, twenty twenty four. Motion. Yeah, wait, are you making? So, do you want to make? Oh, well, I thought you made so the motion. motion. <laughs> and a second. And a second. second, and I'll second. Renee, okay. Okay. You, you got, got Renee and Kathy. Thank, Thank you. you. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. The expectation is that you will all be there. It's the <laughs> table reading at the table. Well, I think that the um, yes committee probably certainly will be out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, think that's that. right. I might be across town today. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I'm glad that we brought that up because um, Kelly, an action item for you and I to work on is guidance. Village guidance for staff and trustees. Mm -hmm. And I did reach out to Mr. Bloom, our trusted counsel, for my own guidance, right? So he sent me some things. Okay. And uh, maybe we can use that as a foundation to give staff guidance so that they're not in a situation like Kathy Relay, where there was kind of no right. guidance. Yeah. It's just like, don't talk about it. Right. Uh, so we'll take that as an action item. All right. That brings us to correspondence. Any correspondence? No. All right. That brings us to public comment. Any public? Yes, public. Stacy. Um, you know, I'm going to. Oh, no, wait. State your name, your address. My name is Stacy Charlotte. I live on Castle Meadow Drive in Farmington Hills. And uh, uh, I would like to direct comment as a member of the Friends Board when it comes to the master plan. And I think that the Friends uh, would like to have a little bit more involvement in how that's going to um, resolve as the architecture 
architects and the master plan become a, a little bit more solidified because there are some strategic uh, placements that probably need to be considered. Love to have their input. Um, to be more trusted advisors, we have providing input, the better I feel about that. So, and I would also like to add in regards to the signage that I am not a super huge fan of digital signs, except when it's gray and rainy. And I saw the new sign on Eight Mile uh, in front of the hockey, the ice arena, and it was really, really uh, <laughs> obvious, right? It like glowed. Oh. <laughs> and it was perpendicular to the road. Um, and I, I do think that in regards to what Sharon has said, I like to see things be stationary for a lot longer. I, I do some highway driving over the course of the week, and I'm, I'm sure you all do. And when those digital billboards change, they change so quickly that I can't even read the very few letters that are on there. So I think having something be a, a little bit um, more sedate might might help. Can you set the time on how fast it so, changes? I yeah, could imagine it's digital, yeah. right? So I am in favor of it as, uh, you know, somebody who lives in the community. It and would say friends book sale today. I have to tell you that <laughs> when Bloomfield Township puts out its really saggy looking now, like plasticky sign, mm -hmm. people flock. People flock. When I put out the yard signs, Jim put out the yard signs, people were like, oh, I saw your sign, so I came by today. So people are noticing this, and it's not like incredibly flashy, but it's pretty cute. So yeah, it's really anything cool. that you do is going to be welcome. But I, I do think that um, moving with the times is also. Yeah, I think once we get, we see it, you know, in real life, I think that'll bring us um, a lot of It seems like we've all agreed. That just what does it look like? All right. Any other public comment? I have seen none. Any trustee comment? All right. Seeing none, I think that will bring us to adjournment. We can consider ourselves adjourned at 750. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody